What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be doing a quick walk around and going over my bike in a little bit more detail. So stay tuned and I uh, hope you enjoy. So first we're going to go over uh, some of the most commonly asked questions that I get um, about the bike. First one would probably be what brand of bike was it to begin with um, and what model. Uh, it started out as a Eohora X7. If you guys aren't familiar with them, they have a lot of folding bikes and a couple like mountain bike types as well. Uh, they're sort of on the affordable end of things. They usually have either 500 watt. 350 watt or 750 watt motors they don't really do anything on the powerful side it's more like economy bikes i got the bike last spring uh, a little over a year ago about a year and uh, maybe a month or two it started out it had folding bars folding uh, pedals obviously the frame folds and a 500 watt motor in the hub and yeah it was pretty much just kind of the standard run-of-the-mill folding e-bike full suspension Otherwise, you know, it was pretty, pretty normal, basically an electric XP, just a little bigger. And when I got it initially, I had a lot of issues with it. Um, I had a leaky brake line. It had hydraulic brakes originally. Uh, so one of my brake lines was leaking. My shift cable got damaged in shipment. Uh, there was just paint damage all over. Just, uh, there was a huge list. It was probably about 15 or 20 different things that were wrong with it. Um, I tried working with the company for a while. They sort of kind of kept putting me on the back burner and, you know, telling me that they would do this and do that and then it wouldn't happen. And then they would stop talking to me. And it got to be like, I want to say uh, probably two months after I purchased it to where I was just kind of fed up. You know, I, I paid for, when I paid for it, I paid for a warranty as well as the bike. And I didn't feel like I was getting that side of what I paid for really at all. They sent me one package with uh, one, one of the parts that I needed and two other parts that I didn't ask for and had no use for that weren't even for the bike uh, and didn't address any of the other issues. And I, Finally just got sick of it and decided that if they weren't going to help me that I was just going to do whatever I could and I ended up going through PayPal, filing a claim, basically telling them exactly what happened, uh, gave them some uh, pictures of like the email conversations that we'd had, things like that. Waited a couple weeks, didn't hear anything back from the company. I think it was, may it might have been during like a holiday or something over there so that could have been why but Regardless, they didn't respond to the dispute, so uh, I ended up getting half my money back on the bike, uh, which actually was rather convenient because about three weeks after that, the hub motor went out on me. It uh, pretty much just died right in the middle of an intersection, and I ended up having to push the bike, you know, to the other side and whatnot. And so I kind of went through, I did some, you know, research, some thinking, couldn't really decide what I wanted to do or initially I wanted to do just a 750 watt uh, Bafang hub motor just to basically replace what I had you know lost and give me a little bit more torque but after doing some research I stumbled across uh, some more information on the mid drives and 
I kind of liked what I saw. There's a, there's a lot of hills and a lot of woods around my area, and I like to do a lot of off-roading. So I wanted something with a lot of torque that could handle, you know, climbing and trails and things like that. Um, and that's pretty much exactly what the mid-drives are best for. Um, with the power going through your rear gears, you kind of have a choice what gear ratio you're in, whereas with a hub, you're sort of just stuck in one gear. So I ended up going with the mid-drive, and that was uh, about the middle of last summer. And then I kind of just so, sort of did a little bit here and there. You know, I replaced the seat. I replaced pedals. I put these cranks on. They, the left side is offset, so they match. Otherwise, uh, with the factory ones, you'll have one that's, like, closer to the frame than the other, and it's just kind of, I don't know, it's it's annoying. When you're pedaling, you, it feels, you feel sort of off balance, and then, like, when you even when you're not pedaling you feel like one leg is closer to the frame than the other and it kind of makes you feel like you're leaning all the time and i just didn't really care for it so um I, you know i did that went and i did the derailleur and upgraded the chain to a sram uh, ex1 i want to say it's their um eight speed uh mountain bike e-bike rated chain and then uh, i kind of you know i I did some, you know, wire looming and things like that last year just to kind of clean it up. And then around the middle of winter sometime, I was doing research, figuring out, like, I, I originally had 48 volt because obviously this one comes with a frame battery and I wanted to keep that. So I had a diode box where I could have two batteries back here and one up here. So that was what I did all last summer. But I just, I really wanted a little bit more power. I felt like it, you know, it could use just a little bit more more um top speed and just like you know a little bit more torque so i did uh i did some more research and around the middle of winter or so i came across um, the bac controllers uh, if you're not familiar with them they are made by asi they um they also do the phase runner and the base runner and all those and some of uh, like if you know anything about surrons uh, a lot of the upgraded controllers for the surrons a lot of people are using the asi controllers this is basically the same as the suron controller just like a miniature version uh it's less amps i think this one's rated to 100 phase amps something of that n nature whereas the um the Suron ones are, you know, a couple, a few hundred, 300, 400, I don't even know, somewhere up there. But yeah, then I kind of just sort of went through one by, you know, I, I changed the, the stem over to a more traditional mountain bike style because the folding stem just felt really, um, really dangerous. And I didn't like the, the minimum height was like up here and it just, it felt too high. I didn't really enjoy it. So I kind of, you know, I did little bits of that here and there. And then um, the spring, I pulled the controller out. I swapped to this controller, uh, upgraded to a 72 volt battery, which is back here in this bag underneath the uh, paneer. You can't hardly even see it with the paneer on there. Um, and then there's a charge port there for it, obviously. And uh, inside there I have, uh, it's a 63 amp DC circuit breaker. So it's all protected. Uh, if there's a short somewhere, it it'll trip that and then I can reset it. I don't have to, you know, replace a fuse or anything. And if I need to do any work on anything, I don't have to disconnect. I can just pop the breaker. It's kind of nice that way. And then I'll swing it around here so you can see this side a little better. And then um, on this side, this is the other stuff I did this spring. I upgraded to, these are Leaky brand. Uh, it's a new company out of New Zealand. They uh, pretty much specialize in Bafang, aftermarket Bafang components, from what I understand. I haven't really seen anything else by them. But anyway, I, I so these were leaky, so then I decided to get the 40-tooth, they call it the bling ring. And then uh, they, to accommodate this, because the original drive cover is too big for this gear, I had to get their drive cover as well, which is the red guy behind here. And the one nice thing about this is, it's hard to see right here, but there is a tiny little screw there that you can remove, and it is a grease port. So if, you know, these, this secondary reduction gear, usually you want to grease them on these bikes around every thousand miles, maybe even like 500 if you're really beating on it. So having that ability to, to have a grease port there and not have to take the whole cover off and pull the clutches and all the uh, the stuff that's in there out is really nice so the, just that alone is worth having this whole setup but the 
this it's, it's all billet it's super high quality it's really nice setup so then to accommodate this setup here what i did because i wanted to go originally it was eight speed with this this new controller it has so much power that there's really almost no need to have half of the gears that are on it basically it's got so much power that you can skip every other gear so what i did is i turned my eight speed into a five speed so i have my first gear is a 40 tooth to match the front so then it's like a one to one ratio that's really good for climbing but then uh, my second gear is like a 34 i want to say and then from there it goes down uh to i think 22 or 21 so it's jumping around close to 10 teeth per gear and what that does is it makes it where i'm not shifting every two miles an hour because with this it, it has so much power that and to so much torque that when you're gearing out and you shift to the next gear you only have two like two or th maybe three miles an hour before you gear out again because the gears are just so close together because they're meant for you know pedaling they're 100 meant for a couple hundred watts so it's it, they're cl space close together so that way you can still keep pedaling and you don't feel like you hit a wall when you shift to the next gear without a motor um the problem is if you reduce the gears like that you run into issues with uh, a traditional shifter where you're either you you tune you can tune the derailleur so it'll only go so far either direction but you still have an issue where your shifter is either you're going to have to push twice to get some gears some gear you know you're, you're going to hit it and it's just going to feel like there's nothing there like you're going to push 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 nothing and it's like it's a really it's a when when you do it when you change over to this it just it it makes the shifter just feel weird and it doesn't shift right and there really isn't much you can do to fix that other than uh this wireless shifter which is i'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail um in the next video it uh it has a little remote that you can place you know anywhere on the bars or wherever you could uh, they have it comes with another mount so you can mount it to your brake lever if you want or what pretty much whatever's convenient you could use it as a dropper post uh control instead of a shifter and you could put the um the remote like you know mount it to your frame or something it, it's really versatile that way you can kind of put it wherever uh but basically you put you mount the shifter the little remote and then you feed the cable through the shifter put the um put the like the bracket on it run it through to your derailleur connect it like normal uh then it comes with a little app for your phone and basically you just run through the setup process in the app it kind of like walks you through it you set it up how you want um it starts out like you initially set where your farthest out gear is going to be um like tension wise and then it has you jump to the farthest in one and once you've established that it it figures out the rest for you but then you can go back in to each individual gear and really fine tune it um to get it perfect if if it isn't off the bat uh, if you have you know a new chain new cassette all that stuff chances are it'll probably figure it out pretty close on its own yeah and then some of the other stuff that i added here it's got front rear running lights turn signals four ways it's got working brake lights off of both levers so i can you know either either one will activate them or both at the same time it'll still activate headlights on a separate switch horns on a separate switch and then I also have a fingerprint sensor for my main power switch. So if I use the wrong finger, it won't activate. And obviously, if somebody else tries to activate it, it won't activate either. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Just as like, a, you know, if I'm running into a store quick, somebody can't hop on it, turn it on and speed off at 30 miles an hour. The best they're going to do is pedal away at, you know, 10 or 15 or something. And if you put a, a lock on your wheel, they can't even do that. The other thing I added just as a safety precaution was um, a little LCD temperature display, which is right underneath my main display here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that over there or not. Uh, but basically, there's a wire running back and it is mount the there's a sensor mounted um, right behind these heat fins on the other side of the motor. And that'll kind of give me a real time 
temperature of the casing, which is pretty close to what the internal temperature is just because the, the casing is the heat sink. So they're pretty much in direct contact with each other. Uh, is it, and by each other, I mean the stator and the casing. That just allows me when I'm, you know, ripping on trails and stuff, uh, where it's really hot day and it's uh, it's rough conditions, things where it's pushing the bike hard, I have kind of an idea, you know, when I need to take breaks or if I need to take breaks, for that matter. Uh, sometimes you could go all day and you're fine, but then the next day it's five degrees warmer and you might be able to go for an hour and then you have to stop for ten minutes just to let it cool back down. And again, that all kind of depends on the terrain you're on and that kind of stuff as well. It's not just temperature, but it is nice to know. Uh, especially with a motor that costs, you know, $700, that it's not, you know, getting to the point where it's in danger. I, I'd rather not have to pull the whole thing out and fix it or buy a new one. It, it's much cheaper to spend $20 on a um, a little LCD readout that'll tell me in real time, and then I, I know that I never have to even get it to that point where it's a worry. So, um, yeah. And then I have a wireless phone charger here. Um, it's just got a little screw screw clamp sort of system, a little on off switch in the back of it. All of my accessories are powered through relays uh, off of this main power switch. So nothing will turn on until the main power is on. The wireless charger, um, you know, the, the lights, the uh, temp display, all of it, it's all controlled, you know, like obviously, there's a separate switch for the turn signals and lights and stuff, but that one is dead until this main power is on. And that was just, again, kind of like a um, a safety thing I did so people can't come up and start activating things and, and messing with stuff. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, you might leave a blinker on or something and not, you know, if it's in the rear and not you don't see it in the front or whatever, you might not realize that it, you left it on. And then you come out the next day for a ride and your battery's dead and you don't know why. And it might even be so dead that your, um, if it was low when you parked it, it might be so dead that your battery charger won't even charge it anymore because it drained too low. And it's like the battery charger is like, this isn't safe. I can't do this. So um, it's just nice, you know, like to not have to worry about the battery being drained or anything like that. Yeah, the uh, display itself that uh, came in a kit with the controller, uh, that's all touchscreen, so all my, you know, my pedal assist, all menu navigation, everything on that, you know, changing settings, uh, changing the display, what it's reading, all that stuff, it's all through touch, so there's no extra buttons or anything. And that's just in a little quick snap display holder that I can pop it out and unplug it if I'd like you know, feel like I don't want to leave it somewhere with a display, I can do that. What else? Oh yeah, the uh, the fork is actually a 34 millimeter stanchion fork. Um, that is a, it's a 26 inch fork. So it really isn't meant for this bike. Um, the reason that it's on there is I extended this rear shock to a longer one. Um, initially it came with 150 mil shock. They don't really make decent shocks in that size. The Smallest is like 165 mil, so uh, that's what I went with. Uh, but that extra 15 mils raised this back height a little bit, which then in turn kind of changed the ge geometry in the front. Um, and it was just, it, it kind of made it feel unstable and kind of squirrely. So I decided the best thing to do would just be to go ahead and get a 26 inch fork. And with the 20 inch tire, that basically gave me about two and a half to three inches of extra height in the front of the uh, frame it did raise the back you know the seat up just a little bit be due to that angle change but uh, what that did is it well, it gave me more suspension travel i have thicker stanchions so it, it's more durable it can handle more abuse but it also it, it made it so basically you can this thing is so stable at pretty much any speed you can ride it with no hands and i mean that's hitting bumps all sorts it just wants to be upright and go straight and that's kind of the reason i did it was basically for that so i I've, i i guess you could say that like it, it was sort of a it was an experiment but at the same time i sort of knew that's what it needed um just looking at the bike what past experience i have with bikes I just, I knew that the geometry wasn't right on it. And it might be a little, like a half an inch too high now. 
but it, it doesn't feel weird and I haven't had any issues. I've been putting it through pretty much like the worst abuse you could really imagine for a bike and I have yet to have any single issues at all with it. It pretty much just it takes whatever you throw at it. Um, and then uh, the last thing I would say um, I kind of want to talk about would be these tires. Uh, these are uh, Shinko 244 Dual Sport 16 by 3 inch tires. They are um, DOT approved motorcycle tires. They fit perfectly on the 20 by 4 rims. The treads about three to four times as deep. They they're cheaper basically than the majority of 20 by four tires. They're four ply instead of two ply, so they are heavier, uh, but they're also thicker, so they're a lot more durable and less you know and more puncture resistant. I pretty much honestly I don't think I would ever change to a different tire after using them. They're pretty much ideal for this setup. You can go you know, 30, 35 miles an hour around corners on tar, on ga on the gas, or on the throttle, I should say. And they just grip. I've never had them slip. Even going, I've even went through corners with sand over tar, and I still haven't had them slip. Whereas a normal bike tire, you'd almost be on the ground at that point. If you, you know, you're either drifting or you're on the ground. Um, and just longevity-wise, they're going to last, I mean... I would imagine 10,000 to 20,000 miles, you know, just like any, if not more, because this thing's so light. Um, but then you go on dirt or sand or anything else, and they grip amazing on that too. So there really is no downside to them other than they're heavier than the normal 20 by 4 tires, which, I, you know, it, it maybe if you have a, a small motor, like a 500 watt motor, you might notice a difference, uh, like a couple miles an hour less top speed maybe, or, you know, maybe a little, a little less torque or something. Um, but if you're even a 750 watt or bigger motor, I really don't think you're going to notice any negatives from them. Uh, especially if you're going to be in putting them on something like this, where you have, you know, um, 3,000, 3,500 watts or something, it's, you don't, then you really don't even notice it. But I, honestly, I don't think even at lower power levels, unless you get really low power, you're going to, you're going to notice because I can still pedal this bike with no motor and it doesn't really bother me. I can't go fast. Um, and that's ma mainly because of the gearing though. Um, it just did, it, it's not geared for high speed pedaling anymore. Um, I, I could change some stuff and make it so it was, but it's just not worth it to me for what I use it for. It it just doesn't really make sense. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much a rundown on it. Um, all my electronics, extra stuff. This that's all hiding in here. It runs. There's a little hole right here. It runs up and all you know all the plugs and extra wiring connectors and stuff, uh, relays. That's all in there. My power inverters are in here because I no longer have the battery in there. Um, yeah, so. That's pretty much it. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.